Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Wei Tang, joined by Chris Chong and Charlotte Chong. Now, Chong, today is another green day for the markets, up 15 points. Yesterday was up about 19 points. So, I mean, of course, there are now increased expectations of the uh, Federal Reserve not to increase interest rates, not until the first quarter of next year. Yeah, this is one of the abnormalities of financial markets, right? When bad, bad news actually means good news. Yeah, but all these, I mean, renewed search and inflows of foreign funds, I mean, do you think it's just short term though? Nothing is, you know, in terms of fundamentals of the economies. Well, I think financial markets are just really glad and optimistic that given the Federal Reserve not raising rates, it's going to see a fresh infusion of stimulus uh, from, from central banks. And that's, you know, that's one of the weird, weird things about financial markets. Let's get to Charlotte, who has more on the, um, on the market. So we saw about 30 over 34 points added uh, in KLCI today and yesterday. Um, today up 0.91% to 1,662 points. Total volume 2.13 billion worth about 2.12 billion ringgit. Now this is after we saw fading expectations on US raising their interest rates by the end of this year. In fact, we don't just see we didn't just see it in KLCI itself. The entire ASEAN region we saw a sea of green today. Uh, Nikkei up 1%, Jakarta Composite Index added about 2.35%. Now, investors think that they are not going to raise rates this year because of weaker job data coming from US last uh, Friday. In, I think the entire market seemed to be driven by expectations from the uncertain benefits from our Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement and th that we have reached yesterday. Um, I, I don't know, do, do you think we can get any benefits from the TPPA? Well, it's so far away, right? Because uh, although 12 countries have signed off in it, they've got to go to each individual country to get it ratified by each individual parliament. We know there's seen a lot of opposition in the US. There is a lot of opposition in Malaysia. That's, that's two countries out of 12, right? You've got to see go through 12 different parliaments to get it's, through different And the talk has been going for so long. I mean, I, you I, wonder yeah, actually exactly. if something can actually be and, and agreed And it takes another two years to sign the, the minimum, deal deal. Minimum. And um, importantly, this economist actually said something quite interesting. Dr. Jomo Kwame Sundran, he said that Malaysia gets next to nothing from TPPA. It's quite a controversial deal. And he actually thinks that this deal is an investment deal or business deal. It's not really something that we can see, we can benefit from. Um, brand crude, um, moving to brand crude oil, Brent crude was at 49.34 US dollar a barrel after we saw a rally in US gasoline and Russia said that they're willing to come up and um, discuss with all the other oil major producer um, given, given the market condition. Uh, that's all I have today. Back to you guys. Thanks for that, Charlotte. Now, all right, moving on to our hot stock of the day. Today, for our hot stock, we have this company called ES Ceramics Technology Berhad. Uh, it's up only just a 1.5% today. But if you look at the past one year, it's actually currently trading at a one year high. Um, volume of 29 million shares. So this company actually does what it does is it develops specialty advanced ceramic materials. Or to put it in layman terms, right? It produces actually molds or formers for all these gloves. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's uh, what they call a hand, a ceramic former, right? So basically, these are the molds into which uh, you know rubber glove makers like Hatalaga, Hatalaga and Top Glove would actually um, shape their, their gloves for. Mm. So they've gone into surgical gloves, um, medical gloves, they've gone to the household and, and industrial purposes. The thing is, this is what a, what a, it's a fantastic stock that a Kun Yu Yun might actually like, right? <laughs> 10 straight quarters of profit growth sequentially. Uh, negligible debt, about half a million ringgit, but cash 14 million ringgit or so. Um, it's a proxy to the rubber glove sector, and it's a fantastic stock in terms of just moving along under the radar for the last 12 months. It's now trading one cent short of a 52-week high. We did have a look at the, uh, the latest quarter results, a fourth quarter as well as the full year results, right, 2014. You did see net profit for the fourth quarter rising 67%. For the full year, it's actually doubled. But if you look at the top line, the revenue, though, it's been rather flat or choppy, like you were saying, you know, in the last previous years. So, I mean, while internally, the company has been uh, improving a lot in terms of its operations, reducing wastage in the efficiency side, right? But in the sales, I don't know. I mean, Correct. For a company, I mean, you, you have to say that... You, um, Top line has to grow in tandem because there's only so many margins you can squeeze from the internal side, right? You've and got for the to top see line to grow, growth. it's it's a it's a representation of the um, I would say prospects of the company. We're getting right. more sales, more orders. Right. Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, it's uh, it's got to move in tandem with the rubber glove sector. The rubber glove sector does really well. And we've seen top glove 75% up year to date, that kind of thing, um, heart to leg. So, um, you know, prospects seem good. And like, you know, one of those things, it's like financial markets. The more bad news uh, there is in the outside world in terms of bio diseases, the more hand formers you'll need, right? <laughs> I just thinking of that, uh, citing the uh, managing director, Mr. Wong Fuk Lin, right? He actually said that the current capacity of ES Ceramics is about 100 to 150,000 formers a month. Now, this is actually equivalent to a full month's orders by players like Top Glove and Hata Lega. Yeah, so I mean, for, purely from, from a financial perspective, it's trading at something like 13 times trading 2015 earnings. That's not bad when you consider the index. 
is somewhere around 14, 14 and a half, 15 times earnings. So it's still relatively cheap, although it is trading in a 52-week high. So if you ignore the choppiness of revenues and top line, and if you can kind of get, get your mind around that, 10 straight months of sequential profit growth is still 10 straight months of sequential profit growth. That and also because, I mean, if you look at the profit size, right, it's rather small. Yeah, it is still the quite small. Million, so, so yeah, it's a smaller right. base if you, it's easier smaller to actually base go effect, faster. But still, yeah, so that, now, that is the thing. Now, to wrap up, ES Ceramics, uh, which makes mostly formers for gloves, it actually rose 1.5% today. Uh, but in the last one year, it's actually trading at a one-year high now. Uh, while it's also our hot stock of the day, but it has also been flagged as a negative momentum by the age research to take note of that. So uh, profits of the company have been rising, but uh, revenue has remained rather flat on mostly internal costs and operational uh, efficiencies.